This is the Voice Over Marketing Podcast, episode number 34. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. My name is John Melly, and this is the podcast dedicated to teaching in-depth and advanced marketing strategies for people in the voiceover and audio production professions. My goal is to help you make more money by showing you ways to leverage your time, charge more for your talents, and allow you to spend more time doing the things you want to do in your life. Hey there, it's John. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. It's been a while and uh, (laughs) I've got a story for you. I kind of dropped off the radar for about six, seven weeks, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Um, I have been working on the show. I've had guests. I've done recordings of interviews and I'm prepared to put those together and I want to share those with you. But uh, this this has been a crazy month and a half for me and hence the title of the show, What Happens When Disaster Strikes? Are You Prepared For It? And even though I've prepared content for other episodes, I've decided to push those back Because this is an important thing to discuss. It's not a lot of fun. If you're the kind of person that wants to put their head in the sand and pretend that bad stuff doesn't happen, then stop listening now. I am fine. I've been very, very fortunate and blessed that I am A-OK. But uh, some people, you know, bad stuff happens and we can't predict when they are. Even though I haven't published an episode in about six or seven weeks, There have been downloads of this podcast every single day. I received emails from listeners. I I got a voicemail from Evan Schmidt. Uh, So, Evan, thank you. I will play your message in an upcoming episode. People telling me they like the podcast. And, you know, the number of downloads is 26,973 for all the episodes of the podcast from all around the world. And this wouldn't have happened without you spreading the word, and telling your friends and colleagues in the voiceover and production worlds about the podcast and recommending the voiceover marketing podcast group on Facebook and on LinkedIn and just the comments of people saying how much they value the show means so much to me. I can't tell you. I get a lot of pleasure from producing this podcast. And so I've, I, you know, I've, you're never far from my mind. I'm always thinking of what I can talk about in the podcast that has to do with your voiceover and or production business. And life happens. So what happened? You're like, well, okay, John, get to it. Okay. Well, so I own a condominium. I bought it before I was married and I was not there at the time when this happened, but on a Tuesday morning, my f- iPhone started going berserk. I started getting text messages. I started getting phone calls in the morning. It happened on a Tuesday morning. Uh, Anne started to get phone calls and messages from my sister-in-law, from my mom, from my sister. And there was a fire in the condominium building. And there are a hu- over 100 units in this condominium complex And 36 of them were damaged and or destroyed by fire. And there was unfortunately a man who lost his life in the fire. And there were probably about 30 or 40 people who are permanently or temporarily displaced from their homes. And I kind of get a little emotional thinking about it because I am so fortunate. My unit was unscathed and so were those of my neighbors and I didn't even have to file a smoke damage claim there was no smoke smell in my unit everything is fine for me but to look across the courtyard from my deck my balcony that overlooks the courtyard and the pool and all that and to look across the way and see people's homes, people who lost everything, and one man lost his life. You, st- <laughs> you hear about survivor guilt, and I can kind of comprehend it because I stood there with my neighbors as we looked out that evening, and I, we, we're all shaking our heads and go, how did we get to be so fortunate 
that, you know, we had to wait for about 14 hours for the power and the water to get turned back on. But we could go to bed in our condos that night, uh, whereas other people had to go find another place to live. And, uh, you know, other people were making other arrangements. And disaster doesn't happen on a schedule. And I went to the local school that evening where the fire department was there and the Board of Health was there and the housing authority was there and other officials and from different agencies and nonprofits and some a gentleman was there from the Veterans Administration to help any of the vet anybody who was a veteran who may have been displaced because of the fire. And the fire chief said this in the front of the room. He said you know, I've been a firefighter for over 32 years, and as wonderful as the Red Cross is, you will do better. You will have better accommodations. And this is he was speaking to the people who needed to find a place to sleep that night and going forward. Um, you'll do better reaching out to family and friends and loved ones than the Red Cross can do for you, as wonderful as the Red Cross is. And the Red Cross even said, you know, we'll pay for two nights hotel room. But you need to understand that you are in the Boston area and it's graduation season. So there are no hotel rooms available. And I was sitting in this room and I'm thinking to myself, oh, my goodness. I mean, I don't want to use the word refugee. Uh, in a small sense, they were. But, you know, you, you don't want to be in a position where, I mean, and you can't help it, but you, do, you want to do everything you can to prepare for bad stuff. Bad stuff doesn't happen on a timetable. It happens anytime. This happened at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. It didn't care that people were asleep. It doesn't wait for the sun to come up for bad stuff to happen. You know, it doesn't care if it's, you know, you've got to go to work tomorrow or disaster doesn't care. It just happens. And so this, it started me thinking, I can, rem I can, I was standing on the sidewalk, you know, the police tape is up and the fire departments everywhere and there are ambulances there and there were buses and the Red Cross had a tent set up with juice boxes and water. And, you know, I'm standing there after I, after I finally processed what was happening and I got over to the property and I'm looking and there are people standing in there in their socks and skivvies with a towel wrapped around them, you know, because they got woken up in the middle of the night. And I just remember one gentleman standing there after the fire chief said, OK, the fire is out. Um, some of you will be allowed back in to your units to retrieve some belongings some units, we can't let you in because they're structurally unsafe. And one gentleman, this one gentleman was standing there and he said, I've got prescription medication that I need to access. And it's the middle of the month. Can I go back into my unit to get my prescription? Because I'm going to have a hard time getting the pharmacy to understand that I need a refill you know, because, you know, they won't, certain prescriptions, they won't refill for you until you've used up that month's worth of, of a prescription, you know. And the Red Cross came in and stepped in and said, yes, we will intercede on your behalf. We will vouch for you that, yes, your, your stuff was damaged in a fire and you need your prescription. So, but I mean, it started me thinking about what would happen if, you know, you needed to get out in a hurry. Are you prepared? And it started me thinking about our businesses and our day-to-day -day lives. And I thought, you know what? This is important. And I need to share this with you. So I want to ask you, how prepared are you? This fire started as a result of someone tossing smoking materials into some bark mulch that was around the bushes that were near the edge of the building. Might have been a cigar or a cigarette or whatever, but somebody just kind of tossed the butt into the bark mulch and then it smoldered and then a breeze came along and it started the fire 
And then the fire went up the staircase and burned the de- the deck. And it took out 36 units at 4 o'clock in the morning. And you have to sit there and you go, wow. Stuff happens. I know some of you may have experienced something similar. But there's a lot of folks that may not have. So my question is, how prepared are you? And I started to think of a bunch of questions that, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but I share these questions with you to kind of get your mind thinking about stuff. And it's not a pleasant topic. If you, you know, I don't like talking about it. It's conjuring up all kinds of not fun memories for me. But, you know, I've got kind of got, if I've got information that can possibly help you and save you from some trouble, then I think it's my responsibility to share it with you. Simple questions like, do you have fire extinguishers and smoke detectors? Do you? Could you fight your way out with an extinguisher if you had to go down a hallway to get out of the building? Could you put out a fire? Do you have smoke detectors with batteries in them that would wake you up in the middle of the night? Like I said, this happened at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you know? Do you have data backups of your project? Are they in multiple places? You know, at that hour of the night, it, when, when all you're woken up out of a dead sleep, you're not thinking about, oh my gosh, i got to take my hard drive and my computer. You don't have time for that. you got to save your life and your loved ones. And your pets. You know, some people lost their pets in this fire as well. You know, you can't prepare for everything, but if you can prepare somewhat and think ahead, then you can be in a better position. God forbid disaster strike you. You know, watch the news and these tornadoes are ripping through towns and one house is left standing and the other one is in pieces. Horrible. Floods in Texas are going on right now. But there's all kinds of stuff happens all over the world, you know? And so you need to think about it. Do you have a safety deposit box? What about important documents that aren't stored electronically, like tax return copies, corporate resolutions, or something similar that, you know, your your business licenses? Do you have a fireproof box or a safe? I, again, do you have a safety deposit box? How about insurance? All of these things that you use in your business. Do you have a customer list? What happens if your computer hard drive crashes? Do you have it backed up somewhere else? What about, you know, if everything gets crashed, do you have a printed hard copy of your customer list and their contact information? This is an ongoing process, you know, as you add new things. These things need to be updated. I'm asking these questions of myself. Because, you know, this was a huge wake-up call for me. And I look at this list of questions, I say, you know what? i got to get some of this stuff in order. Some of the stuff I've done, but some of the stuff I need to do. I hope you'll think about it, too. Let me ask you a question. If you lost your wallet or if it was stolen, do you have the phone numbers to the credit card companies to be able to cancel them? What about your driver's license or any other, uh, your health insurance card? All that contact information, it's, it's like gone to wherever your wallet is. You know, smartphones have all kinds of information on them now. Is that backed up somewhere? Do you do that? Do you keep your calendar on your iPhone? I know I do. Have you transferred it over and have a backup in case you lose your iPhone and you need to be able to function? Um, can you access all those places and cancel your credit cards before all, all kinds of bills are run up? Um, You can make a photocopy of the front and back of your cards and your licenses, and you can keep it in a safety deposit box or in a fireproof box, and you can retrieve it to make those calls very quickly. Passports. What happens, you know, if you need an ID, if you needed to get out of the country or get in the country? What about your passport? Where do you keep that? God forbid you get in an accident. Is there someone else on your business banking accounts? And like I said, we treat our businesses like a business. 
I, I that's a theme of mine is like voiceover is a fun business, but it's a business. So assuming that we treat our businesses like businesses, you're going to have a separate checking account or uh, electronic account for your voiceover and production business. Is there someone else on your banking account who can access them and make payments and or deposits for you should you not be in a position to be able to do that for yourself? You know, are all your passwords for your email accounts and any website admin pages, you know, where you go in and you update content or you upload audio to, or you have a blog or a podcast, uh, are all of those passwords uh, for all of those accounts somewhere for a trusted person to be able to make changes to those pages or close them down for you if necessary. What would happen if your studio burned down or you were flooded out? I know of a couple of voiceover people who have posted that uh, their studio's flooded and it put them out of commission for a while. How long would it take for you to be back up and running? You know, sometimes I'll see ads on TV for this show. I think it's called The Preppers or something like that. And I, I sometimes I think those are those are the the extreme, and that's why they have a TV show. But there's something about being prepared for when disaster strikes. And you know, there's this thing called a bug out bag. Are you ready to go in a moment's notice? You know, things like you might want to keep in that are are uh, prescriptions. You know, for medication if you should need some in a short period of time you know are you a diabetic and you need insulin do you have ready access to that documents cash stuff to keep you going for a 48 hour period of time bottle of water some snacks or something you know you can take anything to the extreme but a small amount of preparation is probably a good thing something that you can just grab and go in you know change of underwear and socks <laughs> Something to grab and go if you've got to get out in a hurry. You know, something that you keep by the door. Might sound strange, but stuff happens. How much gas do you keep in your car's tank? Uh, do you let it get low? Somebody pointed out to me, he says, you know, you want to keep at least a half a tank of gas in your car. Because if the power goes out, the gas pumps don't work. We had one of the worst winters in history here in Boston. And I was keeping my car full, half full, all the time because we didn't know if a storm was going to take out the power. Thankfully, that never really happened this winter. It's amazing it didn't, given the amount of snow we had here. But that was something I was conscious of, that, you know, if the power goes out, I'm not going to be able to get gas. And, you know, with the amount of snow we were having, who knew how long that was going to take to get that back up and running? So do you have enough gas so that you can get to some place where there is power and refuel the car? Do you have gas to be able to get to some place where you can stay with someone? This is not an exhaustive list by any means. And it's not a very fun conversation. But, uh, you know, I was blown off course. It's I was able to keep working and all that kind of stuff. But obviously... Other stuff had to take a back seat for me to kind of sort through all of this. And there were some other things going on in my world that I, I won't go into now. But uh, you know, long and short of it is I am fine. My wife is fine. All my loved ones are fine. There is no damage. And thank God, I mean, I consider myself com uh, totally blessed by this. But then you have to say, why them? and not me, grateful that it wasn't me. But then you have to ask, well, why did this have to happen at all? And the sad thing is, and I will make this a little bit of a soapbox moment here, the sad thing is is that it was totally preventable. If the person who was smoking had disposed of their cigarette butt properly and not used the world as their ashtray, then this fire wouldn't have happened. And those people wouldn't have lost their homes. And that man wouldn't have died that way that day. And if you sense a bit of anger in my voice, it's because I am angry that this happened to all of these people when it didn't have to. 
And, uh, you know, if you do smoke, don't just toss your cigarette butts or your cigars out the window or anything like that. Use an ashtray. Better yet, if you're a voice actor, quit smoking. You know, (laughs) I don't need to go into it anymore. Everything's been said about smoking that needs to be said. The people who continue to smoke need to make a decision. And um, that's all I'm going to say about that. But I just ask these questions to make you stop and think a little bit. I don't like to be Debbie Downer, if you like. Um, I hesitated on putting this episode out, to be candid with you, but it is important. And I care about the folks who listen to the podcast. You reach out to me. You communicate with emails and Facebook comments and and speak pipe messages on the page. You record voicemails and leave them to me. And, uh, you know, we've got a little community going here. And I just want my job here is to do the do my best to give you good content and share it with you. And even though this isn't a pleasant topic, I thought, you know what, I got to share it. So I hope you take some of it to heart and you start maybe making some copies of important documents or go out and buy a firebox, a strong box or something, or prepare and put some stuff in a uh, safety deposit box and just start thinking about things that, you know, like I said at the beginning of the episode, disaster has no schedule, no timetable. It, it just happens when it happens. And we need to be prepared for it. So... I wish nothing but the best for you and safety and prosperity for you. I am very grateful that I am okay. I'm more than okay. I'm completely fine. And I'm counting my blessings this month uh, because I have got a lot of them, and I'm very grateful for them. And I hope you stop and do that too. And, you know, the most important person in your world, you go and you talk to them and you say, hey, I love you, and give them a big hug and let them know how important they are to you because you never know. So I... I'm going to go do that now, (laughs) and I will talk to you next week. I've got Andrew Locke recorded. Uh, We're going to talk about some really, really cool stuff, really cool marketing. We're going to learn from Walt Disney. Andrew is a a massive student of Walt Disney and the Disney Corporation, and he's got some really cool information that he's going to share with you. So with that, I will wish you all the best, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Our program originates in the Boston studios. We hope you'll join us again. Until then, we bid you au revoir, keep your chin up, and the best of luck. Well, that's it for this episode of the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes. And please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on -on one-on-one coaching with me and mastermind group opportunities where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at johnmelly.com. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.